Okay, so this question is saying number of excellent pairs you have to find, and excellent pairs are the ones whose or and and if you perform two numbers or and and after that you count their set bits. The count of set bits should be greater than equal to a given number k. If that be the case, that the pair should be counted. So now one question is about, let's say if I give you two numbers number one and number two. What is your observation about, you have to actually count, it's like set bits in N1, set bits in N1 plus set bits in N2. Sorry, it was not in N1 and N2. This was in set bits of N1 or N2. You have to do bitwise or, so set bits of N1 or N2 plus you have to count set bits in N1 and N2. If this value is greater than or equal to given value K, you have to consider this as one pair. You have to count how many such pairs are there for which this property holds true. Now a little bit about bitwise operators. I give you any two random numbers, N1 and N2, what this expression will turn out to be? This expression's value. If a bit is set in both the numbers, how much will they add as a count to the final answer? Let's say if ith bit is set in both, in N1 and N2, then how much contribution will it have to the final answer? In N1 or N2, that bit will be set. For example, if you have two numbers, let's say one is seven, another is six. So seven is triple one and six is one, one zero. This bit is set in both. This plus this expression, how many contributions this one one will be? In and will this become one? In OR also, this will become one. If you do OR of seven and six. So if both the bits are one, one, in final answer, total counting bits in this plus this, how much contribution will be there, one or two? Yeah, guys, if two bits are one, then we will add two to the answer. Fair? Yeah? If ith bit is set in N1 or N2, is set in N1 or N2, how much contribution will that have to our answer? For example, this bit is set here, not here. So it will have one because it will come in only or not in and. So then you will be adding one. And if ith bit is zero in both the numbers, how much contribution will that have? Yeah, it will have zero contribution. Okay. So can we simply say set bits in N1 or N2 plus set bits in N1 and N2. If I have to write a simple formula, I'm giving you two, three options. Will it be equal to, let's say, set bits in N1? If this is A and set bits in N2, this is B. Can you tell me this plus this will be equal to A into B or A plus B or A minus B or 2A plus B? Can you tell me which of the four identities do you think will be true? Let me call it one, two, three, and four. So one is true, two is true, three is true, or four is true. So 
Okay, Harini says two is true. Kumar says two is true. Yeah, others, what about you? Okay, so we are saying this expression is nothing but it is equal to set bits in n in n1 plus set bits in n2. Everyone agrees for this? In set theory, there is something called inclusion exclusion principle, where we say A union B is always equal to A, size of set A, union size of set B. In fact, it is number in this is equal to number in A plus number in B minus number in A intersection B. So ideally, if you see number of A union B plus number of values in A intersection B, I'm just sending it the other side, is equal to N A plus N B. This is the fact it is using. If you see OR operator is like a union and operator is like an intersection, A both should have it and then we are counting set bits. So ultimately, this is the identity we are observing. Now knowing this fact, we don't have to do OR and AND, we just have to find the pairs such that if you take those pairs, their set bit count in first number and second number, their sum of set bits should be greater than or equal to N. Is that fair guys? Find all the pairs of numbers, set bits of first number and set bit of second number. If that value is greater than or equal to K, that is our answer. Yeah, so let's take an example. Let's say some numbers we take, a small example, seven, six, three, two, one, nine. These are our numbers. This is our array A, and we will take an array of set bits. How many bits are set in seven? Binary form of seven, how many bits are set? Three. In six, how many bits are set? Two. In three, how many bits are set? Two. In two, how many bits are set? One. In one, how many bits are set? One. In nine? Two bits are set. Now, if I give you a value k, and let's say k is four, I want to know how many pairs of this given array are in such that their set bit count is greater than or equal to k. Manually going, seven can form the pair with how many numbers? Seven can form that pair with how many numbers? with every other number, because seven has set bits three, six has set bits two, three plus two is five, greater than or equal to four, makes sense. So seven will contribute to the answer as one, two, three, four, five, six. And in fact, in this problem, seven was included with seven also. Okay, so seven is, it, it is giving you six pairs. And all six except seven, like it is also counting if one, two is a pair, two, one is a separate pair. Can I say seven is contributing six plus five? Because six, seven, three, seven, two, seven, one, seven, and nine, seven are considered to be separate pairs. The total 11 pairs, seven is given. What about six? Again, if you go with six, two plus two, four, two plus two, four, 
six with itself also, but six to seven we will not count. That is already taken. So six is able to form the pair with three and nine, and six itself also. So six is able to form three pairs. One with itself, one with this, one with this. So three pairs, and vice versa two. That means three six and nine six. So this is total five. Yeah, is this making sense for everyone? Yeah. Okay. Now, if I ask you for this two, you saw how many values are there in rest of the array which, with whom the sum of sum of this two is greater than or equal to four. That is what we are just checking in brute force in manual way of doing. But now, if I ask you this this array set bit count array, how many unique values it can have? How many unique values it can have set bits? If these are integers, how many set bits an integer can have? How many set bits an integer can have? 32, if it is a signed integer. Here, I think it was only positive values. So 32nd bit is not even considered. Only 0th bit to 30th bit is sufficient. 31st bit position, we don't even need to worry about. So can we say the maximum values this can have will be number can have zero bit set to 30th bit set. Is that fair? Yeah. And now if two is occurring three times, frequency mapping is good enough. Three is occurring one time, two is occurring two times, one is occurring two times. If you have, oh, two is occurring three times. If you have this frequency mapping, somewhere available with you, counting becomes easy. Counting the pairs become easy. Yeah. So now you have to simply see three has how many other values in this array. If array size becomes like with frequency, if you see every values, unique values become 30, it just requires a nested loop of 31 cross 31 to solve the problem. Even if you go brute force for three, loop over every other element, find the answer. If you know the frequencies already, remove the duplicates, get to the frequency point, and just you have to find three with how many other values is able to get, a, is able to get the sum greater than or equal to three. Is it making sense to everyone? Okay, one person, yes. What about others? Yeah, so ultimately we are talking about if we get set bit counts, unique set bit counts, unique set bit count array, and a map with bit count and its frequency. If you have these two things available with you, for every set bit count, you have to find the pairs. It's just the kind of, uh, after that, because this array size will be 31 max, it just requires two nested loops to solve the problem. In fact, zero bits, you do not even have to worry about. Zeros also can be discarded. So this problem can be solved with this approach. And yeah, there are many other alternatives. You could have gone ahead with uh, binary search of values, two pointer technique. There are many other solutions that I will suggest. Go over the discussion forums, uh, refer to what other people have done. So, so that will be helpful to solve this problem in, in many more ways. Like we have discussed one approach, one simplest approach. Cool guys, then we'll stop here.